Hey everyone, this is Austin Schur here with We Write About Music, and today I am back on with Angel Quintas. Since the last time we spoke, he's put out his debut album called Self Portrait, uh, so now I can't wait to pick his brain all about it because I'm loving it. Angel, thank you so much for coming back on today. How are thank you Thank you for having me. I'm doing good. What's news in Florida, was it? Yeah. What's going on in Florida? Is it swampy yet? Uh... It, the humidity is <laughs> enough to feel feel like you're you know knee deep in the Everglades, but it's it's that's just always <laughs> Florida all the time. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I think that's uh, either why people go or why they avoid it. You know, I guess it really because we get a lot of people whole... coming down for the summer, but then during the summer it just rains all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've definitely been stuck in a tornado situation in florida once so uh but yeah enough about the weather in florida let's talk about this album first off massive congratulations Thank you. Um, i'm really loving it i sincerely mean that and the first thing that i really want to know from you is now that it's out in the world and it's alive how are you feeling about it i'm excited because now it's like well yeah now i'm actually a serious songwriter and artist because, yes. you know, it's one thing to just like release a few songs and then like to actually dedicate time and energy into a full album and then dedicate time and energy to release it and to promote it and, you know, to try to push it as far and wide as possible. I think that shows true like dedication to the craft of just being an artist in general. Totally. So it's been what, a week or two now, I'm pretty sure? Uh, so at the time of recording, <laughs> It's been, tomorrow would be a week, yes. Oh yeah, okay, so how's the feedback been? What have you heard from people? And like, uh, on, honest opinions, not just like, you know, your parents, like, good job. Well, everyone, everyone seems to really like it, you know, especially like coworkers really like it. And nice. my friends from work, or my, my friends just in general really like it. I've gotten good feedback from like, to my followers on social media um two of my friends on social media on twitter they did like a thread of like you know reacting to the songs as they were listening to them that's awesome so that was like a nice little uh mood boost and they did it like, you, yeah how like do you the feel exact when moment it came out uh, it's weird because you, i see that people do that with like ariana grande or like <laughs> yeah, I see people do it with like tv shows and stuff yeah it's it's i don't know it's weird um but it was really cool. It was nice to see. Them. All right. So I want to know, you know, it's been a week at this point. The moment that it hit streaming services or the moment that you either woke up and experienced it out in the world for the first time, can you sort of describe the feeling of like just listening to it in full, the completed finished product? I'm not going to lie. I stayed up uh, to, and for like, the release came yeah. out at midnight um and i was a, a bit tired but i <laughs> now the adrenaline are you kidding me you would think um, i would think now I, I, I was really excited it's just it i was kind of for me it, it takes a while for things to like hit i'm not one to like instantly react to like big things yeah. like like that um so I'm sure like tomorrow I wake up and I'm like, holy crap, um, I have an album out. What is this? Yeah. Uh, when I look at the stats, it's very, it's very much like that. Like, wow, it's insane that this many people are listening to me. Um, I don't know. I was just really excited. And then, you know, uh, a couple of friends of mine, uh, they were, I got like instant feedback and they said they really liked it. And then throughout the day, I got just more and more you know people tell me that they really enjoyed it mm. have you gotten any negatives like dude i'm sorry uh, but no <laughs> surprisingly <laughs> surprisingly no I, mean, I don't know if maybe yeah. they're just being too nice like you know what? Maybe mm -hmm. i'm gonna keep this to myself um i don't know i haven't gotten any bad feedback yet or any like constructive criticism so far everything's been like sure. 10 out of 10. why well, I, I truly it's have also still the first week so that is true. Um, I will say that I've listened to it through a few times already, and I appreciate it. Everything that we discussed in our last talk, in terms of like influences, and 
and talking about the Arctic monkey and Arctic monkeys and talking about Paul McCartney and even just like random little mentions of artists here and there. It's like this melting pot of sound. The amalgamation. Like, yeah, it's like this really cool melting pot of just like you 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 certainly hear all of it in there, but it's not. You know what I mean? Like I'm definitely stroking your ego right now because you deserve it. But at the same time, like it is unique in its sound, but it is you have brought something new to the entirety of it. I hope that kind of makes sense. I hope that doesn't it, yeah, I get it. It's salad. like the obviously the 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 foundation is there, but I've built my own thing over it. Sure. And so I have to know, like, I don't take you for a perfectionist like to the extreme i think all artists are and there's in some right i'm not well, saying i am like, a sagittarius so <laughs> okay so all right put yourself in the extreme perfectionist standpoint for just a moment mm -hmm. is there anything that you've listened to or listened through it that you were like oh man i should have done this or i should have done that um, or i should have tweaked this or do you think that's just natural i would i think it's natural uh, obviously because you listen to like, you know, when you're making an album, especially if you're the one kind of doing all of the production and the mixing, you listen to those songs like enough times that they're engraved into your like psyche. And so sometimes you kind of like forget about the imperfections and like, sure. you know, the stuff that could be tweaked. And then it gets to a point where you're like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm just, I'm take, I'm sending it. Right. Um, but there's a few, like, for some songs, I would have changed, like, certain melodies, or, I think mean, that's really the only thing, like, for a few songs, I would have, uh, maybe, like, just like one or two, I would have changed some of, like, the melodies to yeah. kind of sound a little better. But then again, I kind of say, you know, it's my first album, so sure. obviously there are going to be imperfections, because the more I work on, excuse me, the more I work on, you know, the craft, the better I'll get. It's like anything. Yeah. So I, I kind of don't beat myself up too much over it. Sure. I think listening to something too much, you just become kind of numb to it after mm -hmm. a while. What was the point for you? And obviously I don't know really the background here on when you submitted it to, you know, go to streaming, but when was the point that you were like, I'm done? Was it the last song? Did you work yeah. on it in chronological yeah. order? Uh, well, I kind of I didn't do the songs in chronological order. I did them a bit sporadically. <laughs> okay, no, 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 that's yeah. I was gonna ask. Something I do not actually. recommend if you're gonna make an album, have a plan, kind of plan things <laughs> okay, out. Okay, okay. Schedule recording dates. You know, um, completely reasonable. Um, but after I finished, after I was satisfied with the final mix of the last song that I did, I was like, okay, it's done. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like. That's it. I'm sick of working on this thing. A little, yeah. Well, all in all, how long do you think it took you from start to finish? From like first lyric to like <sighs> clicking that submit? Um, I would say maybe a year and a half. Damn. That's yeah. a significant amount of time. Yeah. And because I also like worked on it on and off because, you know, obviously there were days sure. where I wasn't feeling great or like, I was, yeah. you know, like just too tired to be bothered to do anything. So but you can't rush it. Exactly. You can't. So from writing to recording and then mixing. And also, also what I did was like, which is, it's not essentially a good thing, but um, I did some of the songs, they weren't completed before I started recording them. Okay. Because like I had like the sound of the song in my head of how I wanted to sound. I wanted to capture that before I finished like writing like harmonies and melodies. Okay. So like I had like the instrument the instrumentals mostly done and then lyrics were mostly there. I kind of like would tweak them as I was like recording. I was like, oh, there's gotcha. like <laughs> there's like too many syllables in this line. I, sh I can I can like just you know use different wording and just kind of cut it to make it sound make it you know more appealing to the ear. Right. Um, and so there was a lot of that during this process. Um, but yeah, that's why I say like if you're gonna have if you're gonna make an album, kind of like write 
I have like all of the lyrics, melodies, harmonies, you know, all that stuff, get that out of the way before you start recording. So that way it's an easier process. And that's really yeah, what I've learned. This is the learning process. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's, There's... that's what I've learned from it. So like, you know, the next time I do it, I'm like, okay, I'm going to write this stuff first and then I'm going to, you know, get all the recording stuff done. And then, cause it makes the recording easier when you just have everything already done. Sure. So, yeah. So I've always said that my dream job would be working for like a label or something like that. And an artist is like, okay, I have 10 songs. Like I'm going to put them all on an album, but I don't know what order to put them in. Like take these, listen to them, analyze them and put a track list together. How do you as an artist even attempt to do that? Like, how do you listen to your music and attempt to make it flow from start to finish? Well, for some songs like Self-Portrait and The Reprise, those mm -hmm. are obvious. They're going to be, Self-Portrait was going to be the first one and The Reprise was going to be sure. towards the end. And then the songs in the middle, I kind of wanted to build a sort of narrative. Okay. And so I was like, okay, well, how do these songs kind of like go well together? And like, oh, well, it could be like a love story. It's like falling in love. And then just kind of like, you know like some sort of rift happens and they break up and then you know they kind of learn and they grow from it and then it kind of concludes into this you know kind of wholesome thing of just sure like the the life experience or whatever you want to call it would you equate it to like plotting a puzzle i would say more like writing a screenplay <laughs> okay well what or, the or just be? like writing a book for example, just, sure. just to have like a narrative and like plot lines and like where you want the story to go. Okay. All right. So obviously the album is called Self Portrait, mm -hmm. which I love just as an album name. <laughs> I think it's, it's funny I think because it's I, I was looking it up on uh, Apple Music the other day because I was making a, a playlist. Okay. Which by the time this interview's out, it'll the playlist that I'm gonna that I make it will already be out. It's like it's called Self Portrait Behind the Lens. Oh, sweet. Okay. <laughs> and it's like the songs from the album and the songs that inspired them. Oh, please send that and I'll include it. <laughs> uh I'll send it to you. Yeah. Um and so I was looking up on Apple Music and there's so many albums titled Self Portrait. I was like, oh, really? Okay. Like yeah. I knew the Bob Dylan one. <laughs> sure. But there was like some K-pop group that also recently released an album called Self Portrait. Okay. I was like, oh, well, you know. Maybe I'll come up with my search for the album name. That would be nice. The next one's going to be called Sgt. Pepper's Only Hearts Club Band. Yeah, but just change one letter so that yes. like if anyone I'll spell out Sgt. Mm-hmm. Instead of the SGT, just Sgt. Like, that's how you capture the searches right there okay so <laughs> what i was going to say is the album is called self-portrait right lyrically do you feel that it reflects you as a person like is it like looking in a mirror in terms it of the reflects story? my uh how i emote and how i process things in terms of emotions i okay. would say not to get all deep and philosophical with you um please i have purposely left this interview as loose as can be because you're a great conversationalist and i'm just going to flow off what you're saying that's what happens when you work in customer service yeah um, yeah my whole um, life <laughs> yeah, i'm sure you too yeah uh so i feel like in that aspect it's more of like a retrospective well not a retrospective but like more like a like a self-portrait like of how <laughs> my yes. how i like internalize and rationalize like my emotions especially when it comes to like relationships and like if i like someone mm -hmm. and how i you know mentally process a relationship okay if that makes any sense it does well is that um, like the overarching theme of the record Would just basically that? like you know being in love and you know living Mm -hmm. just life in general i get that well then i guess take us back a year and a half ago 
when this wasn't even a thought yet what was the turning point for you like as a musician being like I'm going to put pen to paper and I'm going to make this thing from start to finish uh it kind of it wasn't really so much of like a set thing like here it is I'm gonna start doing this okay. um it was more like you know I'm just gonna write you know I'm gonna try to you know make music that I want to hear and music that I enjoy yeah and try to you know make it into my own style or my own interpretation um and so that was kind of the main uh driving force and then once I kind of had a couple songs together I was like all right I guess I'll just I'll make an album and I'll just hey I'll just whip on whip on up. I mean that's that seems like this the progression so like no, I know, with I like know. a few singles and then like an album it's like okay I kind of had that mentality so it's like all right I'll you know write a couple songs and then you know I'll put an album out I get that yeah just a simple I mean you know what anyone can do it but it's actually it's and then making like, the realization of how much actually goes into it right yeah and that's the hard you're part. telling me um, I know and like, I think, you know, one of the earliest songs I wrote that's on the album was Daisies because I had written that mm -hmm. early, early, early. Um, it was originally like a lot slower. It was more like, like psychedelic kind of sounding. Okay. Um, and then I was just like, I just want to write like a, like, a, like a Beatles type song. And that was really the only thing. And so I kind of like chose like, you know, Beatley type lyrics, you know, roses mm -hmm. may be red, violets may be blue. One thing is for sure, they don't compare to you. <laughs> like, yeah, I can picture John and Paul coming up with that. And so yeah, just laughing to each other, like, yeah, yeah that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. we, should, we should go with that. And so, and then kind of like the, I use similar like language, because, you know, like I said, my love grows like daisies in the sun. Sure. And that's very similar to like, um, uh, like, like eight days a week for example yeah you know using those that type of like language like that um exaggeration of like how much you love someone right i mean i i a hundred percent felt and noticed the struck like the beatles type structure on some of the songs but like in a reminiscent way that was like oh yeah like i can hear the influence but like i said like the originality and the the artistry that went into it it's so not at the same time like it it 100 percent. i know we touched artistry. on this it has that that uh that lush sort of like lounge type feel to it where you could just like kick back in a comfy chair put your feet up and let it flow through you know what i mean and I don't know if that's what you were going for, but you I, I, I wasn't really going for anything in specific in terms okay. of the album. I was like, these are just songs that I like, that I wrote, that I want to share with people. Well, okay. Well, then I was there really, you go. That was really the main gist. I like that. You could be like the total asshole artist who's like, this is the best thing that has ever come out in the world. <laughs> the people must I be mean, up right now. I mean, Kanye West already exists, so. Ah, yes, that is true. That is true. That we don't need any more of those. We don't need any more of that. Now, I don't want to hop too far into the future, but I do have to ask, you know, considering that you have spent so much time working on this, are you going to give yourself a break? Or yes. Are you gonna <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. You're darn tootin'. Is it, is it because not that the creativity has run out but no, not that you're that you're just like stuff. you just it's need a, a mental yeah. yes a mental break 100 percent on many levels i need a <laughs> mental break okay. um you know i still like i'm still like demoing stuff and writing stuff but something sure. like okay you know you don't need to rush to come out with the second album yet you can wait yeah but it's just that like the creative process is very addicting to me like i like you know writing and i like yeah demoing and stuff like that and i just have to remind myself to pace myself true i mean you have a life you have to have a life outside of it because yeah. then it will consume you as a person it definitely will 
how are you putting together these demos? Are they just like lyrics that come or you're just screwing around the guitar or? A little bit of everything. Um, you know, I'm doing a lot of like garage band stuff on my phone. Sure. Um, which is how the, the last one started. <laughs> um, you know, just messing with like chord progressions on guitar. Yeah. Um, I have, I jot down some lyric ideas, stuff like that. All right. I mean, are you going to be looking to experiment at all within the sound? Are we going to get the, the, uh, the electronic disco album or is it going to be in the same vein of what you're making? I'm going to keep quiet on that one. Okay. So you got to throw the people for a loop and you got to do like a hour and a half polka album. Well, that's what Weird Al is for. <laughs> hey, there's not enough polka in the world. Polka? Polka? Polka. Oh, polka polka not enough of that in the world um i will say it's definitely gonna be um something that is based off of my influences sure and i'm gonna leave it at that okay well speaking of your influences i know we've spoken about this but is there any other artists that have come up that you do listen to that you wouldn't necessarily want to impart their sound like Maybe some things that don't necessarily reflect the music you make, but just things um, that you enjoy in general. Bob Dylan, I would yeah. say. I really like his stuff, but it, that the folk thing isn't really, even like when he went electric. I mean, the one song that I have one song that's like a favorite, like Changing of the Guards. That's okay. probably <laughs> like if I were going to do a Dylan inspired song, it'd probably, probably be in that vein, but I don't see myself like doing just acoustic and harmonica because it's not really yeah that's i mean if you could tell like the first album it has like all these orchestral arrangements sure. and it's very pop heavy yeah so and that's kind of like the lane that i'm in um and that's kind of like where i'm comfortable sure. and that's where and it's pop can be anything so there's room to like experiment and yeah. grow totally. so i'm you know okay where I am now for the time being. Okay. Well, so now you've got this album of songs. It's right around like the 20, 30-ish minute mark, which is primed for you to hopefully get out there and play these songs live. Is that something that you'd like to do? And if it is- Yeah, uh, I was, I'm kind of, you know, playing with that idea. I still, I'm, my main thing is I need to get like a, a band together, like a backing band. Okay. I'm trying to find people who don't have too big of an ego who wants to be like, oh, let's change this and that and the other and the third. It's like, I just, I just want you to play the songs. Right. I mean, I understand like being in a band is very uh, collaborative. Um, yeah. And I'm not, I'm not saying I don't, I'm like against it, but no. you know, I don't want like people being like, oh, we should change this into like a completely different thing. It's like, I just, you know, <laughs> want people mostly like, okay, you know, I'll play this for you. But isn't it collaborative in the sense of like, you're a band making songs together rather than you're hiring musicians to play your music? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, for the Got next it. one, for the, for the next record, I guess I can use more of a band. But I just, that's kind of like the thing now. I just, I need, I guess like a, like a backing band type of thing. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out, so. Oh, dude, no rush. I'm just saying. I think that these would translate really well. And honestly, like it does, like the record as a whole does kind of border like the jazzy feel. So finding like a jazz club or like, a, like an actual lounge to play these songs in, would be ideal in my opinion. Interesting that you say jazzy because I wouldn't have thought I mean jazz I mean, some of the some of the songs I'm not saying like a horn section or anything. I just mean like the setting wise. Does that right. kind of make sense? Yeah. I don't know. I think it would translate really well. I'll keep that in mind. Now hypothetically speaking, you book a you book a gig and the venue manager says to you, okay Angel we're super happy to have you, but you can only have one song. You have a, you get a one song set. What's it gonna be? Joni. I said this the last time. I'm gonna say it again. Joni. I will die on this hill. 
Okay. Uh, and then now you've heard it. So now right. you kind of know, you can understand like what I said the last time. It's very like Fleetwood Mac times 10. It's very much like a fun song. Sure. So I feel like that one. And it's the first one I wrote for the album. And so that one is just like, without a doubt, the do Joni. Nice. I've only got a couple more for you at this point. Sure. I'm going to let you give go. Me, give me all of the questions you've got. I have nowhere else to be. All the questions. <laughs> it's past your bedtime. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, man. Um, I just want to know, like, aside from making the music and aside from, like, you know, whatever you do in your normal life, is there any specific, like, hobbies that you'd like to pick up that you'd like to, you know, further work on yourself on? I know that I asked how you'd like to work on yourself as a person, but even putting music aside for a moment. Uh, I am trying to play tennis more. I, I do enjoy, even if, it, if I'm horrible at it. Uh, I yeah, do it doesn't enjoy, matter. That'll get you moving. Uh, yeah, I, I do enjoy playing tennis. I actually might play tomorrow if the weather permits, if it's not too hot and it's not raining. Nice. Um, uh yeah i think tennis and then just in general you know going to the gym and exercising yeah man um, and dieting uh just you know getting a better physical shape because i feel yeah you know we need to take care of ourselves you know it's true it's true i mean i think that in the creating sense like you're taking care of yourself mentally and it has to be such a nice feeling to like I don't know, you're, you're past it now, the, the album's out, there has to be like a weight that's lifted off of you, right? Definitely. I, I don't yeah. have the stress of like, you know, deadlines to me or, you know, I don't have to, you know, spend long hours recording anything yeah. for the time being. I can just kind of relax. And Well, did you set hard deadlines for yourself or did you go more like a relaxed feel to it? I was kind of like somewhere in between. Like I would have deadlines, but it was like, oh, I'll just push it to like my next availability if I couldn't get it like done that day. Um, so I wasn't too um, hard on the deadlines. Gotcha. All right, Angel, my last thing for you here is gonna it's gonna mirror what I asked you when we finished up last time, but I'd like to give you kind of a floor here to make the final plea to sort of convince the viewer for them to listen. Um, I will say before you start that they should listen regardless because it's awesome, but more of like a parting message on your end. Um, If you like, you know, classic rock type of sounds, if you like, you know, 60s pop type of sounds, if you like 70s (laughs) type of sounds. Sure. There's a little bit of everything in this really album, is. I feel like. Um, there's like classical stuff. There's it, there's a little bit of everything. That's all I can say. And if you're curious, you know, give it a listen. The links will be down in the description. It's all there. It's all there for you. Angel, I'm going to thank you again for your time. And I'm also going to congratulate you once more because I really thank do think that this is a special record that I'm going to be listening to my personal time as much music that comes across anyway. Um, and yeah, man, I, I look forward to speaking again soon. Don't rush yourself on the next thing. I know you won't, oh, trust but, me. but I will I'm, say that uh, I'm looking forward to whatever comes from you. I can say it's gonna definitely be better because I've upped the production quality. That's all right, man. You don't need top quality production. It's uh, the heart mm-hmm. and the soul that comes across. I know, but you know, it, it, it is noticeable, you know, even the slightest thing I just sure. want it to sound better than the last one. Sorry, right, man. You always and, work on it. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, I'm going to take off and I'm going to thank you again and have a good rest of your night. You too. All right, man. I'll see you later. Thanks for having me. Bye bye. <laughs>